Good morning, everyone. Let me present you today our ongoing work about the lapidary artwork of Amerindian from the Caribbean, and especially on the raw materials used to produce it. The prehistory of identities develops in a, what archaeologists can understand today as a complex chronocultural framework, which is different for almost each island. Greater Antilles present very old sites with the complete succession of Paleo-Indian, Meso-Indian and Neo-Indian population. On the contrary, the Lesser Antilles present for its main part only more recent sites with settlements spreading from south to north with a South American origin, both for Meso-Indian and Neo-Indian. Parallel to European archaeology, Meso-Indian represent a ceramic but sedentary population. And Neo-Indian is synonym of ceramic age, and its first half is named Saladoid, after the site of Saladero. This culture spreads in the Lesser Antilles from the north of South America, and especially the Orinoco Basin. The culture we are going to be interested in during this presentation is the one of a people of horticulturists, gatherers and fishers. Their material culture is characterized by decorated ceramics and a simple lithic toolkit. They, they had a large and diverse use of shells, both utilitarian and symbolic, and they also had specific funerary practices. Finally, one of the specificity of the early phase of the Saladoid is the importance of stone beads, their diversity in terms, their diversity in terms of shapes, colors, and raw materials. As you already understood, the specific aspect of their material culture will be the topic of this presentation. We are studying this artifact in the framework of an ongoing project funded by the French Ministry of Culture and the Guadeloupean Regional Council. It is based on three work packages, one about technotypology of the artifact, one about raw material characterization by non-invasive techniques, and one about the creation of a comprehensive database about these artifacts and its study by means of GIS. These work packages are designed to try to answer these questions. Where did they find these raw materials? When did they start and stop this lapidary production? And how did they craft these, art these artifacts? The starting point of this project has been the study of a recently excavated Saladoid site in Guadeloupe, the Gar Gar Maritime site. It has indeed brought to light 50 lapidary artifacts, apparently from a large diversity of raw materials. We applied different non-invasive techniques to identify the mineralogical composition of each artifact. We used mainly Raman spectroscopy, but also X-ray diffraction and X-ray fluorescence when necessary. Thanks to these different techniques, we have been able to identify 13 different gems among the 50 lapidary artifacts. Combining this approach to technotypological analysis, we are thus able to propose a chain operatoire for each raw material or raw material family. Recent excavations have the, great, have the great advantage of sieving and thus recovering small artifacts as well as small chips or other fragments of the chain operatoire. But recent, recent excavations account for only a very minor part of the archaeological record. We applied the same anal analytical techniques to ancient excavations artifacts and even to surface collection artifacts. This allowed us to expand the number of different raw materials used by American gems up to 23 only for Guadeloupe, and we still have a bit of work to do for this island. Another part of our work is the creation of an online database listing our results on an almost exhaustive, almost, we hope at least, literature review for the Caribbean area. This work enables us to list today more than 2,000 lapidary artifacts, with more than half of them still unidentified correctly piece by piece. There is still a lot of work to do, and we hope that this online database will help the community to make this effort with us, or invite us to every island of the Caribbean. You can see here the result of this compilation of archaeological sites, quite homogeneously distributed in the Lesser and Greater Antilles. The island of Hispaniola makes exception, but excavations are, are still in progress in Dominican Republic, to my knowledge, and no data at all have been found for Haiti. 
that if a list of archaeological sites presenting lapidary artifacts in the Caribbean is relatively easy to make since this kind of object is rarely omitted from publications, it is another work to do it for the potential sources. The work is still in progress since it is very complicated and time consuming to examine the geological literature of each island or, or for each raw material. This is clearly far from obsidian sourcing. The list of raw materials based on our analysis and literature is very long as you can see here. The number of ident unidentified artifacts is also very high since the major site, Solce, which is here, <coughs> counting for almost half of the record, is not precisely identified piece by piece, making it impossible <coughs> to enter the data in the database. Some of the most represented raw materials are the different varieties of chalcedony. This map shows us a wide distribution of this family of gems from south to north and from east to west. This material, quite common in volcanic environment, has, has been widely used for bead making in the Caribbean. There is even a site considered as specialized in the production of cornelian beads in the island of Montserrat. Two other commonly identified materials are the calcite and the black and white rock generally named diorite in the, pa in the papers. The white the wide distribution of calcite is explainable by its presence on numerous islands of the Caribbean, especially the northern, the northern Pan, part which possesses calcareous islands. This material seems to have not migrated southward to the volcanic islands. For diorite, on the contrary, some spots only exist that will deserve further analysis to try to distinguish between diorite and diorite in the NTEs. Today, black and white stone is identified as diorite and often attributed to a well-known source in Tobago, where tens of beads, preforms, and hundreds of flakes have been recovered. But more precise provenance may be attested with more precise analysis of this work. Green stones have proven to be much more complicated than previously thought. It was indeed one of the aim of the very beginning of the project to identify the green stones from Gamma team site. If some of them were impossible to identify by naked eye, the Raman analysis have provided most of the answers. This eye diver diversity was quite unexpected. The distribution of some of the specific green stones could give clues to provenance and distributions, since they are probably among the rarest raw materials. But for this, we will need to apply such methods to more collections on more islands, since the high diversity is here only for Guadeloupe, where we worked so far. Unfortunately, their rarity and the geological knowledge of the Antilles will probably make it more difficult than easier to identify the sources. There are probably small outcrops, secondary deposits, etc. And even jadeite sources in the greater Antilles have been discovered only recently in the years 2000. By approximating the Antillean arc as a north-south alignment of islands, it becomes possible to project the latitude of the different sites and thus to align the different raw materials. This helps visualizing the distribution of the numerous different minerals in the single graph and the map in the, in the back is thus only a reminder of the actual geography. The first visible thing is the gap that needs to be filled by further studies in the central part of the lesser Antilles. This gap makes it quite complicated to make hypotheses about South American provenancing of minerals, even if, fortunately, there is a site of pearls in Granada that has been well studied and that makes a stepping stone. It is possible to fill this gap since archaeological sites and archaeological beads exist on these islands. They will need detailed analysis so that they can enter a database more correctly and complete the archaeological record. It is also noteworthy that unidentified materials remain everywhere and make more than half of our lapidary database. Causes are diverse. It can be old publication indicating greenstone only, or large collections studied globally and not piece by piece, or even materials given as unidentified by archaeologists by lack of, by lack of mineralogical <coughs> skills or by absence of, of advanced methods. This figure also underlines the interest of exhaustive analysis and the bias it is now integrating in the data for Guadeloupe following our work. 
Some minerals are found in Guadeloupe thanks to mineralogical analysis, and these materials will probably arise in other collections in if similar analyses are applied to the artifacts. On our side, we will try to eradicate all the green points from Guadeloupe and Martinique during our forthcoming mission in November with a portable Raman spectrometer. The results accumulated so far with this project allow for two further statements. The first one is that a large amount of mineral diversity, as newly identified thanks to Raman spectroscopy, can come from Caribbean area and especially subduction metamorphic rocks. Indeed, as you can see on the pressure temperature graph on the left, the subduction metamorphism, metamorphism can provide numerous minerals, including some recently identified by Raman spectroscopy, which are underlined on the, on the figure. And subduction metamorphism, this is good news, is quite common around the Caribbean Sea. While these rocks do not outcrop in the Lesser Antilles, they outcrop in the Greater Antilles and in Central America. The second statement is that some minerals, on the contrary, have never been found as potential sources in the Antilles. Turquoise, for example, is known only on the continent, in the American Cordillera, <coughs> both in North and South America, and in a tiny spot in Brazil. For this mineral, it appears that it is necessary to search largely outside the Antilles to find a material suitable for the production of the artifacts found in Saladoid sites. As for amethyst, lastly, it is also interesting to search for localities capable of furnishing dark violet and several centimeters long crystals. If amethyst is identified in Martinique, it is only very small crystals and with a very light color. Nothing to compare with the beads found in the archaeological record. This mineral, widely found in the site, is also pointing to a distant provenance out, out of the Caribbean uh, arc. As you have already understood, this is an ongoing project and probably a long-term project and we are trying to not to infer too much from the Guadeloupean record, which integrates a bias in comparison to the regional record. To try to fit the station title a bit closer, I would say that as for the little space of the early saladoids, from the data we actually possess, the Caribbean arc seems to shelter a quite homogeneous population in terms of lapidary artifacts. Geographical gaps have still to be fulfilled, but it is difficult to see any strong difference between the north and the south of the Caribbean arc. The effort of exhaustiveness in Guadeloupe has allowed for the identification of new raw materials, threatening a Caribbean origin for part of them. Nevertheless, the social territory of the early Saladoids has probably to be thought larger than the occurrence of Saladoid sites. The provenance of some materials they use has indeed to be searched outside of the geographic space where we find the settlements. Thank you for your attention.